magnetostatics magnetostatics is a branch of classical electromagnetism that deals with the study of static magnetic fields by a static field we mean that the field is not changing with time magnetostatics in essence deals with the interplay between current and the magnetic field we may think that a current is caused by the flow of charges and when there is movement of charges how can it be considered as a static case that is we focus on situations where electric charges are in motion but they are not accelerating particularly in the context of current carrying conductors how do we identify the existence of magnetic fields the magnetic fields are identified by the force they exert for example let us consider two conductors which are connected in series to a battery we are considering the first case where the currents are in the opposite direction in this case we will see that when there is a current flow in the opposite direction the two conductors repel each other whereas as in the second case if we have currents along the same direction in that case we'll see that the two conductors attract each other this force of repulsion or attraction is attributed to the presence of magnetic field if we have a current carrying conductor the presence of the magnetic field can be demonstrated by using a compass needle if we place a compass needle near to a current carrying conductor we will see that the compass needle will align tangential to a circle at every point the magnetic field will encircle a current carrying conductor and the direction of the magnetic field is determined by the right hand thumb rule according to this rule if you place the thumb along the direction of the current flow then the direction along which our fingers curl will give the direction of the magnetic field the magnetic force on a charge q moving with a velocity v in a magnetic field b is accounted by the lorentz force law according to which the magnetic force is given by q times v cross b in the presence of both electric and magnetic fields the net force on q would be f equal to qe plus q times v cross b where qe denotes the lorentz force in the presence of electric fields we shall now try to understand the motion of a charged particle in the presence of magnetic field the first one is known as cyclotron motion and the second one is known as cycloid motion a cyclotron motion happens when we have only the magnetic field in the presence of combined electric and magnetic fields we have what is known as cycloid motion cyclotron motion let us assume that we have a charged particle q having velocity v which is moving in the cartesian coordinate system let us also assume that we apply a magnetic field along the z direction now as the particle is having a finite velocity v and it is in a magnetic field b which is perpendicular to its velocity the particle will be acted upon by the lorentz force and the lorentz force is f equal to q times v cross b because of the finite velocity of the charged particle every time when the particle tries to move with a velocity v this force will act centrally that means that if the particle is at this location the velocity will be tangential but the force will be directed towards the center this will be the same when the particle is in this position that is the particle will be executing a circular motion along a circle having radius r and this kind of motion is known as a cyclotron motion in cyclotron motion the force is always directed towards the center and this force acts as a centripetal force causing the charged particle to move in a circular path 
we shall try to quantitatively account the cyclotron motion. For that, let us equate the Lorentz force law with the centripetal force. If the charge of the particle is Q, its velocity is V and the applied magnetic field is B, this will be equal to the centripetal force that is m v square divided by r where r is the radius of the circular path the particle is going to take. From here we can write qb as equal to m v divided by r and we know that m v is momentum and therefore this is p over r or the Momentum of the particle is given by Q times BR. The term QB divided by M is known as the cyclotron frequency. This is the angular frequency with which the particle will be executing the circular motion. The cyclotron motion has a great application. It is used in a device known as cyclotron, which is a particle accelerator. In a cyclotron, the particle will be allowed to move multiple times inside a structure which is known as a D. And then as the particle executes several motion inside the structure, its momentum increases. And then finally, we will be getting an accelerated charged particle. And this device is known as a cyclotron. In the preceding discussion, we have discussed the case of a particle which is having a velocity in the x, y plane. Let us assume that in addition to a velocity in the x, y plane, there is a velocity along the z direction. The magnetic field was along the z direction and we assume that there is a velocity component for the particle which is parallel to the magnetic field and we will denote that by v parallel. The velocity of the particle which is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field is taken as V perpendicular. When we have a parallel component for the velocity, in that case the particle is going to execute a motion like this. That is the particle moves in a helix. The radius of the trajectory remains the same but the particle is now going to move in a helical path. We now try to understand the cycloid motion. The cyclotron motion happens when we have just the magnetic field. The cycloid motion happens when we have a crossed electric and magnetic fields. That is mutually perpendicular electric and magnetic fields. To understand cycloid motion, we will first fix the Cartesian coordinate system like this. We apply a magnetic field along the x direction and apply the electric field along the z direction. If we place a charged particle at the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system and this particle is assumed to have a charge q, we can see that the particle will be executing a motion like this. And this motion is known as a cycloid motion. Let's try to understand how the particle is going to take this trajectory when there is crossed electric and magnetic fields. So initially the particle is at the origin and it is at rest. That means that the velocity is zero. Now we know that the Lorentz force acting on a charged particle in electric as well as magnetic fields is given by f equal to qe plus q times v cross b. This is a case when the particle is having a finite velocity v. Initially our charged particle is at the origin and hence the velocity is zero. So this is position one and at position one the velocity of the particle is zero and the only force that is acting on the particle is the Lorentz force due to the electric field and this force will move the particle towards the z direction. So this is the direction of the velocity of the particle. 
as the particle picks up velocity the magnetic lorentz force develops that is now we have qe plus q times v cross b the magnetic lorentz force as we know is always directed towards the center therefore if we assume that the particle is in position 2 this force is directed towards the center and now the velocity of the particle will be along this direction as its velocity increases so does the magnetic lorentz force and when the particle reaches this position which we denote by 3 here the velocity will be along this direction and the lorentz force is again will be towards the center just after point 3 the particle is at position 4 where the velocity is tangential and is directed like this now in this case the velocity is almost opposite to the electric field that is the charged particle is moving almost against the electric force so it begins to slow down in this case also the magnetic force will be directed towards the center now at position 5 the velocity is downwards and the lorentz force is inwards and at point 6 the particle almost comes to a halt when the particle comes to a halt the magnetic lorentz force is zero because the velocity is zero now the only force that is acting on the particle is the electric lorentz force which pulls the charged particle towards up and this process repeats and the particle moves in a cycloid path that is when we have a crossed electric and magnetic field a charged particle moves in a cycloid path let's try to mathematically account the cycloid motion there being no force in the x direction the position of the particle at any time t can be described by vector 0 y t and then z t and the corresponding velocity would be v equal to 0 y dot and then z dot z dot indicates d z over dt now when we calculate v cross b this would be equal to x hat y hat z hat the components of velocities are 0 y dot then z dot magnetic field is along the x direction so it is b 0 0 and we'll take the determinant this is equal to b z dot then y hat minus b y dot then z hat now the lorentz force is f equal to q times e plus v cross b and this is equal to q times the electric field is along the z direction then v cross b is b z dot y hat minus b y dot z hat now the newton's second law can be written as m a equal to m y double dot along y hat plus z double dot along z hat and this is equal to q times e along z hat plus b z hat y hat minus b y dot z hat we treat the y hat and z hat components separately and then we write m y double dot equal to 
qb z dot from where we'll get y double dot as qb divided by m then z hat and this is equal to omega times z dot where omega is known as the cyclotron frequency qb divided by m now taking the z components we have m z double dot equal to q times e minus q times b y dot therefore z double dot is equal to q e divided by m minus q b divided by m y dot this is equal to q b divided by m then q e over m multiplied by m over q b minus y dot and this is equal to omega multiplied by e by b minus y dot in the previous equations omega equal to q b over m is the cyclotron frequency the frequency at which the particle would revolve in the absence of any electric field now we have the second order differential equations y double dot equal to omega z dot and z double dot equal to omega times e over b minus y dot the general solution for this equations are y t equal to c1 cos omega t plus c2 sin omega t plus e by b multiplied by t plus c3 and zt is c2 cos omega t minus c1 sin omega t plus c4 we'll now apply the initial conditions at t equal to 0 y equal to 0 z equal to 0 then y dot equal to 0 and z dot equal to 0 and when we apply this in these equations that is equation number 1 and equation number 2 in these equations t is 0 therefore this term is 0 this term is 1 this term is 1 and this term is 0 therefore we have 0 equal to c1 multiplied by 1 plus c3 and then 0 equal to c2 plus c4 and we take these equations as 3 and 4. In the next step, we will take the first derivative of equation 1 and 2. When we take the first derivative of 1 and 2, we have y dot t equal to negative of c1 omega sin omega t plus c2 omega cos omega t plus e by b. And when we apply the initial conditions, y dot is 0, this is equal to c2 omega plus e by b. Because when we substitute t equal to 0, this term will be equal to 0 and this term will be equal to 1. From this equation, we will get the constant c2 as equal to negative of e over omega b we will have this as equation number 5 when we take the first derivative of zt we have z dot t equal to negative of c2 omega sin omega t plus c1 omega cos omega t 
when t is 0 this term is 0 and this term is 1 this gives us 0 as equal to c1 omega and we now have the constant c1 as equal to 0 this is equation number 6 we will now take equation number 3 and substitute the values of c1 and c3 we have c1 plus c3 equal to 0 and this will give us c3 also equal to 0 then c2 plus c4 equal to 0 from where we will get c4 as equal to e over omega b therefore the solutions yt is equal to negative of e over omega b sin omega t plus e over b t and this is equal to e over omega b omega t minus sin omega t we'll take this as some constant r multiplied by omega t minus sin omega t we'll take this as equation number 7 the solution for z t is negative of e over omega b cos omega t plus e over omega b and this is equal to e over omega b 1 minus cos omega t so this is equal to r times 1 minus cos omega t this is equation number 8 we shall now rewrite equation number 7 and 8 as yt minus r omega t equal to negative of r sin omega t and zt minus r equal to minus r cos omega t these are equations 9 and 10 we'll have 9 square plus 10 square this will be yt minus r omega t the whole square plus zt minus r the whole square equal to r square and this is the formula for a circle of radius r whose center 0 r omega t r travels in the y direction at a constant speed and that speed is given by u equal to omega times r and this is again equal to e over b so normally if a circle is centered at 0 0 0 its equation is y square plus z square equal to r square where r is the radius now in our case the circle is located at 0 r omega t and then r so what you see is cycloid motion where the particle moves as though it were a spot on the rim of a wheel rolling along the y-axis the curve so generated in this way is called a cycloid notice that the overall motion is not in the direction of e but perpendicular to e electric forces are able to move a charged particle that means that it is able to do a work whereas magnetic forces will do no work magnetic forces only deflect the trajectory of a particle we will now prove that magnetic forces do no work if the charge q moves an amount dl equal to v dt the work done is dw 
mag which is the small magnetic work this is equal to f mag dot dl and this is equal to q times v cross b dot v dt and this is equal to q times v cross b dot v dt which is equal to zero this follows because v cross b is perpendicular to v so v cross b dot v equal to zero that means that the magnetic forces may alter the direction in which the particle moves but they cannot speed it up or slow it down magnetic forces only deflect the trajectory of a particle